Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Richard. This is the Tesla Model X Plaid here that we're trying in the UK. Thanks to our friends T Magazine and Custom Tesla for arranging bringing this car over to us. And we've been playing with it all day, including runways, <laughs> motorways. Go on, pull it through. <laughs> I'll just I'll just be here. <laughs> villages. So we've been getting a pretty good handle on exactly what this car is like to live with, and especially compared to the previous Model X, which of course I'm very familiar with. So we've done a video just now, shot in this very spot, showing you some of the differences, especially on in the interior between this and the previous Model X. But this video is gonna be more like what it's like to drive, what are the differences in how it drives, what's its real world efficiency and range. And of course, we've got this incredibly new fast charging speed of 250 kilowatts in this as well. So. That's what this video is about. Mixture of driving conditions. Let's see what we've got. I've also got a Porsche Taycan over there, which is notoriously brilliant at charging. Very fast charging car. So we're going to set off from here on our final part of today's journey down to, I think, GridServe, where we can charge this on the 250 kilowatt charger, charge the Porsche on its favorite 350 kilowatt charger, and let's see exactly how they compare. So we've been driving this Model X most of the day now, we've covered as many miles as we can with the time we've got it. Uh, now it's the time to talk about what it's like to drive on UK roads, what the efficiency is like, and then we're going to do some charging. And we're starting to lose the light now, so let's just talk about life with this Model X in the UK. Well, efficiency, we started off the day by <laughs> minus one temperatures, and then we were drag racing it up and down the runway, some filming with car wow that we do. Oh, bye-bye. So check out Carwell if you want to see this against some pretty stiff competition, but its performance is mind-blowing. It defies what should be physically possible for a car this size with seven seats. It's staggering, and we put it up against some really tough competition on the runway earlier. So it's outright performance. We know what that's like, that's for sure. So what's it like driving around in UK roads? And let's talk about this yoke steering wheel as well. So let me just indicate over here. And that brings me on to my first point. So firstly, we've got the indicators are on the, the yoke here. So there's no stalks at all. So these indicators, it does take a bit of getting used to. And in most part, they work. When you come up to junctions, you're changing lanes on the motorway. You push the buttons on here to indicate. When you change lanes, they automatically cancel. The one thing we have in the UK a lot more than in the US, for example, is roundabouts. And when you're on the roundabout and you're turning like this and you need to change that you're not going around the roundabout, you're gonna pull off, you've got to change your indicators. That then is a bit more of a challenge. So you kind of get used to it. So if I indicate I'm taking this exit here, that's fine. But imagine me on a roundabout and your arms are like this. And I was driving it around some villages earlier. But that hasn't cancelled itself because we didn't turn enough. I have to push it again to cancel that. But for the most part, you do get used to it. There's no drive stalk, so you have to select drive and reverse on the screen here. But it does, this kind of, it guesses what you want to do. So in the most part, you get in the car and if there's something behind you, it assumes you want to go forward. So it selects drive and you just go. Uh, so that works, but otherwise you've got to get used to sort of park reverse on here. Uh, actually, I've been fine with that today. That's not been a problem. What you do notice this different interior here is lovely. So it's kind of familiar. Obviously the dash is very different with this big screen. And although there's only a couple of inches in the screen and the model uh, three and the Y, it is just lovely. It's large. And I love how you can move the tiles around on here. You can adjust it exactly how you want it. So if you want your radio here, if you want your radio there, you just move it around and it's great. And of course the screen has got brilliant graphics and very, very responsive to everything you do. It's fantastic like that like having this extra display here, like we're used to, so that's really nice. And then just the interior with different trims, like in the doors here, we've got some fabrics. It just feels so much more premium. You know, it hasn't taken too much to really lift this interior from what was starting to feel pretty dated and basic to now, lovely, premium. Again, it's still nice and simple and modern, but just with there's a few extra touches, it's lovely and it feels very solid, it's all good. So it's quite a different experience. I'll just join this dual carriageway here in some heavy traffic and let's talk about this, this yoke. So you hold it like this most of the time and that's good. 
these armrests here are close enough that you can kind of sit with your elbows on these rests and hold a yoke like this or you can slump down and hold the steering wheel like this but i'm not sure quite how safe it is so it's best to have it like this concentrate and hold it properly and you do get used to it would i have the round of the yoke i don't know i've been decided but i'll probably go for the yoke just because it's different and uh, novel isn't it you get used to it it's just going to be the three point turns and that a bit more tricky but you can kind of hold it here and do a quick swirl of the wheel like this if you need to what i do love here is being able to move this display around now what i would say is this corner display is kind of cut off by the steering wheel so i know where the controls button is but you do have to kind of go like that if you're not so familiar but this display here i can move this around to tilt towards me for example that's just lovely i love that in the model 3 and y we actually sell a kit so you can adjust your screen and pull it around to you uh, but here it's motorized or of course I can tilt it towards the passenger if maybe it does happen with me my wife and my daughter might be selecting the music we're playing and there you go take your choice so I think this is great when it comes to autopilot again that's slightly different because we don't have a stalk to control that with we have to use the right hand button on the steering wheel here so I engage autopilot by clicking this button here. Now on this car, you can choose whether it's a double push or a single push to engage autopilot, but single push has now done that. I've got it set to that. And it goes along on autopilot, much like we're familiar with autopilot. Lovely, lovely. It really is good. So if you're familiar with the Raven Model X, where you've got adaptive damping as well as the air suspension, we think this has basically got the same suspension. We couldn't really pick it apart. The adaptive damping is better compared to the earlier Model X, which don't have the adaptive damping. It's got a slightly better ride comfort to it. I like being able to adjust it. And personally, I like just having it in all the soft positions, especially when you're just cruising down motorways like this. So adaptive damping all looks very familiar. There's obviously a few differences with this screen, but we've just done another video going through the interior of this car, pointing out all the differences, and we've shown you some of the screen interaction on that video. So if you haven't seen that one already, just check out our other videos, and you'll see more on the interior differences here. Now, let's just talk a bit more about what it is like to drive. We've got double glazing on the front and on the back windows. We've got noise cancelling, so it's quite a refined, comfortable cruiser. Of course, it's electric, so it's very quiet, it's very smooth, and of course it has tons of power. This is a plaid after all. More than you need on a public road, that's for sure. But it's just effortless, it really is. And you can easily spend many hours a day wafting down motorways. This obviously, with its suspension, does have a much better ride than the Y, for example it's just lovely it's a smooth refined comfortable quiet cruiser good ride comfort and i must admit i rather like it i rather like it indeed now i haven't got an order in for one of these those who have put them in what two years ago here in the you uk should. you think i should uh, pressure's building they're a lot of money but it's a fantastic car it feels like when the testers first came out i first went into a tesla it just changed the game. It changed what a car was. It just completely rewrote the rules. And it just kind of feels like they've just done it again. The next level of rules, the next level of quality software. The interior is now up to spec. I mean, it may not feel as luxurious as an EQS, but it's not, not luxurious. It's just very nice. The ride comfort, I don't think it's quite as comfortable Maybe it's certainly not as an EQS, not quite as comfortable as a Taycan even maybe. It's a little bit more pitchy than that, but this is a big car, a big heavy body with a lot of power to get a grip of. So it needs that slightly firmer edge when you want to put the damping into sport mode. But it's great. Anyway, enough of talking here. I'm going to indicate. It cancels. This has got the basic version of autopilot, so the autopilot actually cancels when you change lanes. But as I change lane there, see the indicator just cancelled itself. That's great. I'll indicate again to come back into that lane. Now it's highlighting there was a vehicle there, but now it's clear, so it's letting me move over. I'm not on autopilot, but it cancels the indicator on its own. But I now have to engage autopilot again manually. And there we are. We can just cruise along. Let's bring it up to 70 miles per hour now. And hopefully you can hear it's very good. It's very quiet. So it's a lovely car to drive, just changes it all up a notch again in what we can expect of a modern car these days. 
And how does it do for efficiency? Well, we're going to give you some of those numbers when we get to a charging destination. So what I want to do here is get to a grid serve in Braintree. I know we're going to be losing the light a bit, but this now can charge at 250 kilowatts. We've got a built-in CCS native in the car now, so we don't have to use an adapter. So the Model S and X to date, we've had to use an adapter for CCS, which is the adapter really has limited the charging capabilities. So that now, as without that adapter, means 250 kilowatt charging. So again, and we've done a bit of charging today already, and it, it, it does seem incredible. In fact, it was pulling 255 kilowatts to go into the car uh, at the Cambridge chargers there. So will this charge quicker than a Taycan, which is notorious for being one of the fastest charging cars you can get? Well, we're going to find out. The efficiency, we're going to find out. What I will tell you at this stage is, we spent the morning on a runway. <laughs> I think I got something like 1,100 watt hours per mile, was it, again? Yep. Yeah, that was the least efficient you can possibly get this car. <laughs> so we've reset trips since then. Let's see what we get in a real world mixture of driving, which is city driving, dual carriageways, motorways, predominantly at 70 miles per hour, real world, heating on, radio on, all that kind of stuff. It's quite chilly outside. It's been hoovering between minus one first thing this morning up to about 10 was its maximum. It's getting colder again now, eight degrees Celsius. So that's it from now. We're going to finish this last bit of today's journey, the last bit of time with this plaid today. And then we're going to uh, check its efficiency and charging. But before we get onto that, just as a summary, if you've got one of these on order and you've been waiting patiently for a couple of years, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. It really is just a fantastic thing. It's taken what was already a good car. The Model X is fantastic. I've loved it. And it just goes up another gear. Uh, yeah, keep that order in. Look forward to it. Just before we plug in and see the charging speed, what have we got for a real world range, real world efficiency in some pretty cold British conditions at the beginning of February? Uh, so aside from the runway bit earlier, because that was over 1100 watt hours per mile, uh, just on a mixture of motorways, bit of town driving, bit of country roads, we usually get in about 350 to 360 watt hours per mile. That's with a kind of battery that's already warm because we were driving it this morning. So from a cold start, it may be a little bit more than that, but you could feel it could easily be better as well because we has also been putting our foot down a little bit because it's a plaid after all, you know, make the most of a few little opportunities. So 350, 360 watt hours per mile, so 2.7, 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. And then based on kind of battery size usable, we think probably 94, 95 ish, something like that, certainly in the 90s. Uh, we're coming to a real world range in today's chilly conditions with a mixture of driving of up to about 260 miles of real world range. But I've got no doubt you could just settle into a long distance cruise on this and you could be right up to 300 in a summer. Yeah quite Forward. possibly over 300 with uh remember on winter tires at the moment as well yeah. that could affect efficiency a little bit um we've got the heat pump in this car would help you could you know i could make this car go 300 miles quite easily but even just driving it in cold conditions 260 miles i think is really quite easy to achieve a longer consistent journey would be better so that's not too bad at all not too shabby for a big thing like this it's as fast as this i think it's incredible now, let's see if we can do the charging speed, because that's also meant to be pretty incredible. See, I just put my foot on the brake and go, and it knows I want cool. to go forwards. Okay. See, it does it? Yeah. Yeah. It knows I want to go forwards. Right, so, we are now at Gridserve Braintree, and this is the location where we've got 350 kilowatt chargers, which the Taycan likes, and we've got 250 kilowatt chargers that the Tesla likes. So we're going to give them both the best opportunity. The temperature is really dipping, and uh, I know the Taycan probably hasn't... Um, do you know, I didn't tell you what the Taycan efficiency was. 2.8. <laughs> 2.8 as well. 2.8. Yeah, so this was 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour on the Taycan. It was also 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour on that last segment there. So, that's interesting. They both got the same. I was wondering if this was going to beat the Taycan, actually, but it didn't in the end. Well, it's heavier. It's bigger. It can carry six people. It carry six I don't people. know, is it much heavier? This is two and a half. Two and a half. That's not two and a half, is it? It's not a million miles from it, I don't think. It's probably so. not a million, but I think this is still heavier. So you get used to this yoke thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you learn. So let's plug it in the sea. Um, what I'm going to do again, so if you stick with this car yep. and film the charging speed of this, I'm going to go and plug in the Taycan 
and we'll see what we get. We can't, it's going to be hard to compare them exactly. We're going to focus on this car really because yeah. that's going to be a higher state of charge. We just couldn't plan it align. With, you know, bad planning. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. Okay. Right, I'll pass you this now, camera. I'll now play let's, that on one. let's see what the mix can do for charging speed. Oh, how long has that been unplugged for? I think just then it got hooked on it as I got out. No! God! Okay, charging speed, it's good. So that did 8% to 90%, took 40 minutes, and it was pulling 250 kilowatts to begin with, which it did earlier as well. So it seems like up to about 23 to 25%, it will pull 250 kilowatts from 250 kilowatt charger, and then it gradually ramps down, but still pulls quite a good charging speed, even at the higher states of charge. So we'll be overlaying some data as we film that charging session. Uh, and you can see it's pretty good. 40 minutes is just about enough time to go and grab a sandwich and a coffee, a cup of tea, answer an email, uh, and then you're good for another couple hundred miles. Does it charge as quick as a Taycan? Well, actually, this wasn't quite a fair test with a Taycan because for some reason it just didn't pull its maximum charging speed off these chargers here. Uh, nonetheless, a Taycan, I know from my experience, actually would charge faster, uh, but it's not by tons, really, for the miles you're adding per minute. Uh, the Taycan does hold a faster charging speed at the higher state of battery, but that's an 800 volt pack. This is still 400 volts. And nonetheless, does it really need to be faster than this? Like you say, you've been driving for three hours, four hours, and then you've got a 40 minute stop and you can do the same thing all over again. It is remarkably good. As is the car as a whole. It may look similar on the outside, but loads of changes really under the skin. And it just kind of feels like all those little changes have really perfected a great package here because I think now, you know, if you came from something like a Range Rover before, you might have missed a premium feel. Okay, it's, I think it's there now with that. The quality certainly seems good. The software is amazing. The screen is amazing. I think I would go for the yoke, actually. The more I, it, the more I think about it, I probably would go for the yoke, although roundabout indicating isn't so easy. It's ridiculously fast. I mean, you really do need to get it on a runway to really get you know, a sense of what this is like. It's kind of too fast for the public road. It doesn't need to be this quick. The normal one's fine, but if you're gonna order the plaid, you're gonna order the plaid, aren't you? So uh, yeah, a great all round package. If you've got one of these on the way, I know you might've been waiting a couple of years, but I think you're gonna really enjoy it. So I think we're gonna wrap things up from here for now. If I think of anything else to say and add to this, I'll add it from the office tomorrow afternoon. From me for now, we're going to wrap up this video. I've got to find a hotel. So thank you for watching. I hope it's been interesting. I hope it's been useful. We tried to do the best we can with the time we got. Time to say goodbye. And I'm going to miss it. It's a good car. See you on the next one.